Miss Frizzle, I have a big problem. I got so many students on this bus that have so much potential. I mean, the problem is they got so much energy and I don't know what to do with them. What do you mean? Oh, it's okay. Solar panel. Yeah, okay. Alrighty. So as you can see, I got my best friend solar power here. Uh, so yeah, welcome to Ubi's Tips, where I pretty much film almost everything school bus related, and now I'm getting the solar power. So it'd be nice if I could put this on the school bus, which I don't think I put it on a school bus, but kids, maybe it'd be a power bus or something, but nah. Well, let's get into the shop and let's start the video. Alrighty guys, well as you can see, right here behind me, I have some solar panels. Now, I actually found a really, really, really good deal on some solar panels by using uh, Facebook Marketplace. I found these panels which are 260 watts for only $30 a piece. So there are deals out there to be made, especially on these older panels, which probably are only about seven years old. Now, when I got there, he only had 25. He had two that were spoken for. So basically he had 23 panels for sale. Well, I went, when I went up there, I told him, why hold the two panels for someone who might come get them while I was there with cash money to buy every one of them. So I did get 25 panels, which now thinking about it, I probably should not have gotten 25 panels because, um, if you're doing them all in series, then yes, you could use 25 panels. But since I plan on doing like a series parallel, you have to have an even number of panels, which means I can only use 24 panels. Um, so yeah, so anyways, I got 25. I have one extra one just in case. So anyways, I wanna show you something I found out. Okay, these panels right here are wired incorrectly. I have other panels back here they're actually wired correctly, but um, the wires were never ever, or they were, I don't know what happened. Now, I know I know these panels are used, but I think whoever had them before probably didn't have the connectors on them. Maybe they just could, uh, tw had the wires twisted together in some kind of weird array without using the MC4 connectors. I don't know. They did put the connectors back on, but they did not crimp the wire. So it's mean, I'll show you in a second on this one here. I got my bench over here. You can literally just, just take the, the wires and just pull off the NC more connectors. So like I said, these ones over here, what was supposed to be the positive wire connector is on the negative wire. The negative is on the positive. So these will have to get rewired for sure. The ones behind me are wired correctly, but you can just literally pull the wire out of the connector. So... Let me turn the camera around, set this camera on this tripod. That way I can show you what I'm talking about. Alrighty, I'm back. So let me turn the camera this way. Okay, so here's the uh, connecting, the connector port on the back of the solar panel. Over here, and uh, see if I can get it on camera. Let me fold this thing out. If I can show you, let me zoom in on the screen right here, right here is a positive, a plus symbol. So this wire should be the, the, the hot wire. Over here is a negative. If I can get it, yep, see so there's a negative. That should be the negative wire. So just remember, positive is on the right, negative is on the left. Now let me zoom your camera back out, sit down my tripod. So when I get to, this is this side of the connector right here, this is a, a female. This is, should be the negative wire. So basically this connector should be on this wire and this connector should be on that wire. Let me show you what they did. So to take these connectors off, all you gotta do is unscrew this back cap. So that wasn't even on that good. I, 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 but you know, usually you have to use the wrench cause usually it's supposed to be torqued down, but this was not torqued down. So I'm gonna take this right here pull look look wire connector they literally just had these things with a pair of pliers they were not even crimped on there wow all right so it's gonna take a second for me to take the connector off 
which I really don't have to because I bought a whole bunch of connectors and things like that. But if I can reuse them, I'd rather reuse them. But I'm gonna have to go in there right now and remove that one. So there's that one. Let me show you this other one. Um, as you can see, you see that gap right there? It means these things did not even been even tightened. So unscrew it. Take take that comes right off, but let me push this back. Look at that terrible job. The wire is not even crimped. It's literally just folded on itself. So I can literally just take this right here and get my fingernail in there and pull it undone. And then, whoa, look at that. So easy. That should not be able to do that. So ridiculous. Just look at that. Just literally just forced on there and wired wrong. Positives on the negative, negative on the positive. I'm repeating myself. Well, let's fit, let, me, let, me, let me fix this. So there's my tools to tighten down the MC4 connectors. There's my MC4 crimper. Is I got new fittings right here. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it all with, with new fittings. So in the back here, we have two different style fittings. As you can see, there's two different styles. Uh, this first one right here is the uh, female end. This is gonna be the positive, on the positive, this is the positive. So this is the one that goes in this one. And this is the female one, which will get this one. And deep inside here, basically, they just come together like that right there. And they'll slide into one another. There you go. So this is the negative, and this is the positive. Just like this is a positive, this is positive, and this is the negative, and I'll just fit in like so. Now, of course, I got that one stuck, and I don't have the one stuck in this one, but I got the, this one stuck. And since I can't find my needle nose, I want to go buy me some. I'm going to have to just get a different connector for the um, the negative one. Got a whole bag of them. So there's the negative, and here's a positive. Alrighty, turn my camera that way. I can still reuse, well, you know what? Since I have the new connectors, I'm just gonna take all these things off. And I'm going to keep these with these, that way I can reuse them. Ah. Basically it's just, um, a um, rubber washer and something whenever the um, end, whenever you tighten this end, I will tighten the fingers around the wire. And of course that's the waterproofing. I was gonna keep these all together. That way I know, you know, where they're at. All right, so these two here. We get to the side. Zoom out my camera. All right, so that's my negative because that is to that side there. This one here is my positive. And of course, you see how much wire is there. That's way too much wire. I'm just gonna trim it half, about half of that off. There we are. So as you can see, how much wire I started with, how much I ended with. So I'm just going to twist the ends. Turn my camera around. I'm going to twist the ends. Let me zoom in now. So I got the ends twisted. And this is my positive, which means it's going to be the big side. This is the crimper. And I am going to set this in the middle one and get it started going. 
That way, so now all I gotta do now is just crimp it. And I'll put this wire, I'll seat it all the way and just squeeze. And all right, as you can see, the ends are here, have actually bit into the wire like this right here. So this wire is not coming off. Alrighty, so let me take my positive lead. I should have probably crap. I should put all, oh no, my bad. You don't have to take that off. So I do need to put that over the wire. So you don't have, you don't actually have to take that off and stick it in the wire. You just gonna take the wire and you're gonna push it in to hear it click. There you go. If you look in there, you can see the metal all the way to the end. And that's about how they did on the other ones. They left it like that. Now, if you notice, these are the wrenches used to tighten down that. This first one will go in just like that, holds it. While the second one has that little opening in, which the wire will fit through and you can take it and you can tighten the end. Keep doing it until you hear some clicks. I hear some clicks, but I don't see it fully seated. So I'm doing some more. There we go. Until I hear another click. There we go. And that one is done. This one is the positive lead. So that one is totally done. All right, on to the negative. Of course, that's way too much wire. So I'm gonna take them a cut about that much off. There we go. You just wanna get all those loose strands. So that way when you stick it in, none of it will, you know, you wanna make sure you get all those, each individual wire into the crimp. All right. So here's this right here. I'm going to stick that on the middle teeth. Go ahead and bite down. That way it's in there, but I don't have it cramped. Just have it set it in there. And now I'm going to stick the wire there in the hole. Set the wire all the way down and just crimp away. And verify your work. Yep, you can see how the, the actual crimps are actually cramped onto the wire, which means also <clears throat> is ain't coming off exactly what you want. So now I'm gonna take the female in, take the little cap off, leave that stuff in, so don't take that out. And just stick the wire and all in and push and turn. And see that? And just see if I can get any further in. That well, looks good. Do the same thing. Hand tighten as much as you can. But this also fits over the, the, the net, your ground. You know, I'm actually doing this watching my screen. So it's hard for me to look through my screen and actually do it in real time. It clicked, but it's not totally seated. So I'm gonna keep going. There we go. It is seated on. And that is one solar panel down. Let me zoom back out now. So, one hot wire, one negative wire. Hot wires to the right. Negative is to the left. This panel's done. Now I'm just going to check voltages, but to do that, I'm going to have to get all this stuff off the panels because I'm kind of using the panel as my bench top. So I need to get the stuff off my panel so I can stand it up and check the voltage. P. Oh, oh. Let me pull it to the edge a little bit. There we go.
Uh, even though I'm doing this in the shop, just these lights will make it have the right voltage. You won't have the amperage, but you can at least check the voltage, and that's what I'm checking for. All right, so I got my meter, and I'm gonna turn it to just regular volts, not 60 or 600. And I'm gonna check down here. I got, uh, let me zoom my camera back in here. So I'm reading DC, because solar panels put out DC. All right, so the ground is gonna go right there. Fire just fit right in the hole. And I am producing 16 volts, which is kind of low because, you know, it's inside the shop, it's nighttime outside, but at least I'm producing voltage. It should be really producing, if it's in sunlight, it should be producing about 38.2 volts. But 16 tells me that it's working. And since I had, since it was a positive number, not a negative, it means that, you know, these were actually right. So this panel is totally fixed and back together. Uh, so that means I have 25 panels I have to redo. I've already got nine completed, which means now I have to do uh, 16 more panels. So I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me doing all 16. I'm probably gonna do a time lapse. That way it'll be like, you know, that and it's completed and it's done. So make sure you guys, when you go by panels, check the voltages, make sure you check to make sure the pause is on the right, the connectors on the right wire. The negative is also the actual um, fitting is on the right wire and check those fittings. Make sure those wires are actually crimped in there. Make sure they're not gonna pull apart because if they don't and they pull apart like these are, they could actually be loose and could cause a short. And what will a short cause? Well, a short will cause heat, loss of voltages, loss of amperage. And if it's really bad case, it could actually cause fire. And fire is something you want to stay away from. All right, so as you can see, this is one I've already made. I'm fixing to make another one right over there. So guys, thank you for so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And just ask that you would like the video. And um, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.